So here I am at the off-grid cabin, and I have a solar system in here, which I've got a video on uh, posted on this site. And I've also got another video posted on some backup power ideas. But what I've done here is I've installed a champion generator for backup power to my cabin. And it's hooked in with a homemade plug into the power outlet for the uh, that, that transfers the inverter to direct power in the solar system and this is a remote start generator which is fine I mean I can sit in the house and turn the thing on and turn the thing off if I want let it run for however long I want it run and turn it off but there's situations where you know in the summertime where I want to run my air conditioner and the solar system that I have will run that air conditioner for you know about 14 hours without sun which is fine most of the time but then there's those times where you've got two or three cloudy days in a row where my solar system only produces a 20 to 25 percent of the power as normal and then it doesn't have the reserve at night to run the air conditioner all night long and then my system will shut down and then with the lithium batteries, what happens then is you have to literally jump start your lithium batteries to get them up and going again. So, I, you know, I could, if I got in question, I could start the generator, you know, at night and just let it run. But I've decided that I'm going to put this, let me put that wire back, this Atkinson Electronics Mini automatic start not remote start it's an automatic start module so what i've done is i've contacted atkinson told them what i had the system that i had the inverter that i had and they sent me the automatic start module that would be compatible with both my generator and my inverter and so i'm in the process now of wiring that up i've screwed it on to the side of my generator here I've already run the positive and the negative from the battery and just got the negative plugged in now. I don't want the positive on now because it'll start draining the battery. And I've got the two wires here, which is this is just two any old wires, uh, 14 gauge, it could be anything, 18 gauge, anything that run to my inverter to the two port remote start port. On the inverter and all that does is it sends a little micro electrical signal to the inverter or from the inverter to this unit when the inverter gets down to whatever their limits are on your particular inverter mine's a 24 volt system I think it's 22 22.4 volts or something like that that inverter will automatically start pulsing a signal that hey we're low on power and if you're hooked up to a remote or an automatic start generator, it'll send that signal to the generator. And then this box will signal through the start button here, the start button here, to start the generator. The one thing about this particular generator is, let's get around here where you can see, this particular generator has a battery switch. If you turn the battery switch on obviously it's going to start draining power well that battery switch has to be on in order for this remote start system or not remote but automatic start system to work if you don't have it on it's not going to have any power from the battery to the system so you would have to turn that on and you could leave that on all the time or you could just turn it on when you think that maybe it might get low and just turn it on because I mean it'll last weeks basically with a fully charged little lithium battery that that will last weeks without having to to draw the battery down so what I am going to do though is I've got a little small little tiny small solar panel with a built-in charge controller on it that I'm going to connect to the battery and then mount up here on top of my little roof or up on that wall somewhere because that is south 
so it'll get enough sun to keep that battery charged so I'm going to finish wiring this thing up Atkinson gives you they give you a schematic for your system of what you can do now if you don't want to hardwire this system Atkinson also has I'm going to hardwire mine because it just it's what I want to do they also let me turn this battery switch off they offer if you have a remote start generator like this one you can send your remote into them and they will clone your remote and then all you have to do is you don't have to wire any of this stuff in to the uh, start switch because the remote will make the start switch start so it's a little bit easier on a wiring job uh, if you get them to clone your particular remote but I, I just don't want to deal with another you know cloning another remote and 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 just one more thing that can go wrong I'd rather just in my mind anyhow I'd rather just hardwire it in and it be done so that's what I'm in the process of doing right now and I'll keep you informed on how this turns out but I expect it to work real good that way it'll turn itself on when it needs to turn itself on and it'll turn itself off when it needs to turn itself off. Here in the wintertime, like now, I don't even need my generator. I keep it covered in the wintertime. It's on under this little roof here. But I put a tarp around it in the wintertime and let the fuel, you know, drain the fuel out of the system. Because it just don't need a generator in the wintertime here. Because the only thing that stresses my system at all is the air conditioner. So, that's what I'm planning on doing. So I've taken the positive lead from the battery and I've added this inline fuse that they call for and shrink wrap the connections on both sides to keep them good and safe from corrosion. So this little connection here, see it's got a little plug on the end of it. They told you basically you want to take an old piece of extension cord like this and use that to plug in. So then I've taken, cut an old piece of extension cord off, fixed the ends up, added the fuse that they called for, uh, shrink wrapped on there, and put the ends on, and that piece is ready to be plugged in at any time. So what allows this automatic start to work? Well, you have to have an automatic start ready inverter in order for this to work or an automatic start generator. In this case, that little green two-wire connection there is the automatic start sensor. And you can connect pretty much any two wires into that, and they don't have to be in any certain order because it just sends a signal. And then I've got that back going all the way back to these two ports here on the automatic start unit. So something else I'm going to do here, because with my generator, you have to leave the switch on. So over a period of a week or so, it would kill the battery if it didn't start. And then you wouldn't have any battery for the automatic start to work. So the options are leave the switch off, turn it on when you think you might need it. Or in my case, if, you know, I'm not sure if you know I'm going to be home or if my wife's going to be here or something then I'll just leave the switch on and when I do that I'm going to use this little solar panel here this is a small solar panel here's my hand you say it's not that big and this particular solar panel has a little tiny built-in charge controller and it has two battery clips so I can just connect these battery clips to the battery on the unit and turn the switch on and forget about it and this solar panel here will keep the batteries topped off at all times of course when I need the automatic start which would just be in the summertime when I'm using the air conditioning unit 
So let me show you a typical wire you got to make up when you're wiring this deal up. This particular wire here, they're calling for a 10 amp fuse. So I took the 10 amp fuse section, waterproof, hooked this with double connector on because I need to connect into an existing connector. So this will connect into the connector and the little side piece on there, you can put the old connector right on that and you can double up your connections. And then we just put a pigtail on here, a black wire, shrink wrapped with the connection together because it's outside, and then a uh, weather resistant connection on the end, which will go onto the proper terminal here. So I put my jacket on to cool down a little bit, but anyhow, I've got this all done now. I've got it all wired in. I've got all the different connections wired into this device. I haven't hook, put the hot wire on yet because I'll just wait and do that till I'm ready to test it, which I won't do in this video. My fuses, everything's hooked back in to this switch section here according to the wiring diagram. They tell you to, you actually use a regular plug, plug in, plugged in here and that monitors the whole situation. My clips for my solar panel down here. And I've got my solar panel mounted right up there. It's not going to need a lot of juice to keep it going. It has a little, like I said, a built-in charger, charge controller with it. So this is my system here for my outdoor generator under a little roof. I won't be needing it probably till the summer. It's the winter time now. Uh, so I'll just cover it up with a tarp for now, keep the fuel off. But that's a solution for you. Now there is one other solution. If you guys want to buy a automatic start ready generator, they make those. Several different brands make those. And I actually looked at those to go with my system here. And what that generator has is it has right on the side of it that same little green two wire connector. So all you have to do with those generators is connect this two wire from your inverter to the two wire to that automatic start generator and you don't have to do any of that wiring that you have here the problem with that is is the generators that i saw that were automatic start ready were like a gallon and a half or 1.9 gallon models which i didn't think would run long enough to service my system and if you buy a larger automatic start ready generator most of those were four and five thousand dollars so for five hundred and fifty dollars for a brand new generator that'll do everything i need in my cabin and a couple hundred bucks for this remote start unit and all the wiring and components that goes with it so for $700, I had the same thing as a four or $5,000 generator. And I could have got, like I said, one of these smaller models for, you know, $1,000 and some, but it just wouldn't service my needs as far as uh, running watts and running time with a small tank on it. So that's what I've done. For my backup generator here at the off-grid cabin, thanks for watching and have a blessed day.